Hello, I'm going to talk to you about mystery. On New Year's Day in 1753, a young City of London maidservant went missing. She'd been visiting her uncle and aunt on the other side of the city, and although the family instituted a search, the young girl had disappeared without a trace and they feared the worst. So you can imagine her mother's shock when Elizabeth reappears suddenly on January the 29th in a bedraggled and emaciated state. The story she has to tell is remarkable. It's very dramatic. She'd been set upon by two robbers who'd um, hit her and stolen her things. And when she woke up, it was in a house in Enfield Wash, just outside London. The house was run by a widow called Susanna Wells. And Wells had tried to persuade Elizabeth to turn to a life of prostitution. When Elizabeth refused, another resident of the house, an old woman, called Mary Squires, had forcibly removed Elizabeth's stays. She was then thrown into a loft upstairs with just a loaf of bread and a flacon of water to stay, sustain her before making her escape towards the end of the month. Well, the story was sensational and an article appears almost immediately the next morning in the London Daily Advertiser. And the involvement of the press is important here. Because when people hear about the fate of the young maid servant, they make donations. The famous novelist Henry Fielding hears about her case and offers to undertake its investigation for her. And in February, Susanna Wells and Mary Squires appear in the Old Bailey. The press have not stopped reporting the subject and the whole country is outraged by the treatment that Elizabeth Canning has received at their hands. There's a furious mob of Canning supporters outside the courtroom. And worst of all for the two women, another resident of the house in Enfield, a woman called Virtue Hall, gives testimony that actually corroborates more or less everything that Elizabeth Canning has said about them. They're both found guilty and sentenced on the 26th. Now the thing that's bizarre is of the offences, it's the theft of the 10 shilling corset that's considered important. And Mary Squires is sentenced to be executed by hanging. Wells is to face imprisonment for running a disorderly house, with the added barbarity of being branded with a hot iron. Well, luckily for both women, the trial judge in the case, the Lord Mayor, Sir Chris Gascoigne, is not convinced by the trial. He's disgusted by the behaviour of the mob. He finds many of the testimonies deeply unconvincing and he feels very sorry for the old woman, Mary Squires. He institutes his own investigation of the case. And indeed, he finds that important witnesses have been prevented from entering the court by that mob. The other witnesses from Dorset are prepared to testify that Mary Squires was in fact in the West Country when Elizabeth Canning claimed she was in Enfield. And finally, there was Virtue Hall's now recanted testimony. It took the jury just two hours to find Elizabeth Canning guilty of perjury. And on May the 30th, 1754, she was sentenced to transportation to the United States. So why is this case so fascinating? Well, it revolves around three working class, rather common women. And 20 or 30 years before, the middle classes and upper classes would have found it rather sordid and below their interest. But now what we have in the city of London is this new thriving media, this new social media. It's no accident that very close to where Elizabeth lives in Aldermanbury, we have Grub Street, the home of, sort of low press and hack writers. There are many coffee shops and taverns in the city where news is discussed. You can't exaggerate how famous the case became. There were questions in the houses of commons and lords. The king knew about it, even abroad. Voltaire wrote an essay in support of Elizabeth Canning. Powerful men, such as the Lord Mayor and Henry Fielding, were prepared to stake their reputations on the turns and twists of the case. But why? Were the women were avatars of Georgian ideas of womanhood. We have the maid, this innocent virginal creature. We have the disreputable and rather villainous Susanna Wells. And don't forget, this was a woman, a widow in charge of the house, a woman in charge. But the real villain of the piece is painted to be Mary Squires. And here we have a nasty taste of prejudice 
racism and sexism because she's described early on in the case as being a gypsy. That's very close to Georgians to being Jewish. She's old and crone-like. There's something witchy about her. And you see this in her depiction in the media. And in the middle of all of this, we have that implacable figure of the maidservant, Elizabeth Canning herself. Now, she was transported to Connecticut and she lived out the rest of her life quietly. But to this day, we have no record. We do not know what happened to her during those three weeks. She appears never to have told anybody. Well, thank you for listening. Next time, I'm going to talk about another mysterious woman associated with the city of London. 